Definitionally, right, MOOC is a massive open online course. Um, really, it's a, a learning experience in which um, learners can come to the content at any time and go through a series of learning materials, whether they be videos, readings, interactions um, with other learners, as well as applying their new knowledge through a series of um, assessments to reach a new level of skill and mastery. I would say most of the courses are in the tens of thousands of learners. Um, now our courses are in auto cohort models, so starting roughly every two weeks, um, but then learners can take them through that period or, or roll into them. And so it's hard to say how many are in each particular cohort, but for a course, they kind of continuously growing um, into that range. So our learners are really coming from all over the world. Um, demographics wise, we're usually in the like 25 to 34 range, um, some level of education, and more often than not are also already working full time. Um, and so in this, um, we also get a little bit of everything, right? So you do get people that are older and younger. Um, there's a lot that are trying to um, either pivot or completely change careers. So even if they're studying, it may not be in what they're currently working in. Um, and all of them, I would say, in some way are looking for a transformation or a change from, from where they are right now. I think uh, where we've gotten to today is that MOOCs are a really great tool for instructors and institutions to use to think about what are the materials, um, what are the learning experiences that are most useful to a huge group of learners, um, external necessarily to their campus, that um, can have access to it through a MOOC platform. So um, MOOCs are great for reaching learners in an online space that aren't able to come and participate in your traditional learning experiences, but that can still gain a lot of knowledge um, and opportunity from access to, the, to your instructors and to that material. MOOCs are really a space for kind of self-directed transformation. So regardless of where a learner might be in their learning path or in their career, a MOOC gives them an opportunity to learn more on their time, on their schedule, at the amount of effort that they're able to put in given all the other requirements on their time. Um, I think we don't know yet where exactly they'll land in terms of how far they could grow or what they'll be capable of. Um, I do think right now they're not, nor are they particularly intended to compete directly with um, the traditional learning experience. I think the more that um, learning becomes a lifelong process and the way that our jobs are, are changing today, this is going to happen more and more, MOOCs will find their spot um, where as new learning needs pop up, someone can, can jump in and, and take a MOOC to meet those needs. Um, I think the part of where you're getting at or, or maybe part of answering your question um, is that then they can also be stacked together in different pieces. In Coursera in particular, we have them that stack initially into specialization. So a group of MOOCs that give you a chance to go even deeper into a particular skill set. Um, then there is also, we're also looking at some initial degrees. Um, and so this starts to get a little bit closer or, um, you know, question the, the difference um, between that and a, a traditional campus degree. But again, it's for a really different subset of learners. So if we're talking about perhaps the niche um, that is really important to um, MOOCs, it's people that aren't able to pause what they're doing with their lives to um, go on campus and focus fully on learning, but that are doing it in parallel with, with everything else that they're doing.
One other piece, uh, in addition to what we've already talked about, which is kind of timing and, and pacing, um, is the community with which you can engage during a MOOC experience. So uh, definitely different campuses give you the opportunity to connect with different people, um, but the variety of people with which you'll get to interact in a MOOC, I think, is, is really huge and is an awesome way to, to meet others, to interact, and to learn not only the content that you're in the MOOC for, but also how to engage and thrive in a multicultural environment. Overall, it's very exciting. The, the possibilities are endless in terms of what you can do and the ways in which lives can be impacted. Um, we're really privileged at Coursera because we are doing this all in partnership with the university and institutional partners around the world. So um, we are being inspired daily by the instructors and the teaching teams that are coming up with you know, how they want to be teaching these different components, what it is that they want to be teaching, and, and we we really are a helping hand in understanding the Coursera learner specifically and how broad <laughs> of, of a group that is, as well as our platform and how to use it really effectively. So there's a partnership at the kind of university Coursera level, um, and then within each institution, how exactly they decide who is creating which learning experiences is, is up to the university. Um, we do have a content strategy team that looks to understand um, what learners that are coming to the platform are really looking for, what are the career transformations that they're trying to reach, and what's the content that we don't have yet to help them on that path. And then our partnership managers go out and talk to those universities um, to see who has experts in that field that's excited about creating content for that particular space and then it comes to our team the teaching and learning team to work with those particular um, instructors and teaching teams to, to make the content happen really it's about expanding their reach and so depending what it is that gets them most passionate what got them into to teaching and to being that subject matter expert in the first place. Um, there are different avenues for which we could see what would be exciting for them to teach a MOOC, but I would say regardless of what their answer is, there's something for them in there. Um, if it's really about the, the learners and getting a subject that they care about passionately, passionately into the hands of more um, people around the world, this is one of the biggest megaphones that they could use to, to get that out there. Um, if they're interested in furthering research, um, this is a way that they can share what they've done and depending on the type of research um, can also be collecting a lot of information. We've seen many professors that bring MOOC learners into, um, the, you know, into that study in terms of uh, especially things that are across cultures or across different um, countries and, and parts of the world. Um, if they're interested in um, learning how to teach better, um, both for themselves, for their students on campus, um, then this is also a great way to do that given um, the way that they're able to see how so many different learners are interacting with the content and the learning experience that they create um, and through that data make it better and better and then think about what it is that they also want to take back to their on-campus classrooms. When a MOOC launches, all of the content that a learner needs, all the different components of that learning experience are all already there on launch day. So to create a MOOC, um, you really need to start from the endpoint, which is where do you want the learner to be by the time they're done, and then work backwards um, and put all of that in up front. Um, one of the two-sided coins, right, sort of a blessing and a curse, um, is that you as an instructor in a MOOC don't get to in real time react to how a learner is doing or to the questions that they have. Um, and so in creating the assessment and then creating the um, kind of teaching content for those, um, you need to be thinking kind of one step ahead of your learner so that you can um, 
using your, your previous experience as an instructor, be able to build all of that into the content. That's not to say, though, that we can't also continue to iterate on it as it moves forward until we do get a lot of data from the learners, and then we can always be making the, the learning experience better. Um, but it's a lot of putting that up front um, before it launches. One of the biggest issues or challenges there is in assessment. So as you're scaling up the number of learners that are in your course, um, the time that it would take to manually grade an assignment is scaling linearly with the number of learners that are in that course. Um, and so in the MOOC setting, both for the number of people that are in it as well as the time scales on which we're giving these, it's just not feasible uh, to have an instructor or even a, a team of TAs really doing all of that grading in, in the same way. Um, and so the way that we've tried to um, work with that is figuring out how can the instructor best um, teach even those additional components of the grading part. So um, one part is how can we productize it, so turn it into something that can be automatically graded. Um, and so there we have a variety of different quiz types or even programming assignments that can take us to more complicated places. Um, and here, where it's really crucial is for the instructor to be thinking about the um, creation of the problem itself, but then also the feedback for all the different ways that learners could be responding. Um, and so by kind of a priori inputting the feedback so that when learners do get um, something right or something wrong, uh, the machine can, can take the place of that instructor, but only because the instructor put the information in there uh, to help guide the learner in their next step. Um, for more complicated assignments such as um, essays or, or different creative components, even if you're getting to things like business plans, right there it's really hard to train a machine to do this type of work, um, but instead that can turn into an additional learning experience for the learners. And so there the instructor is not only creating the assignment itself, but also the grading rubric for it. And through the rubric, um, they're trying to take how they would approach looking at a learner's work and put it into a um, set of prompts to help learners through that same process in providing feedback to each other. Um, this could be particularly tough because uh, instructors are usually unconsciously great at what they do. And so in creating the rubric, we're really asking them to unpack what are the steps that you take in looking at a learner's piece of work and being able to say, okay, this is where you are right now. These are the steps that you need to take to really be a master in this subject area and break it down um, for other learners to be able to take that role. But we've found that it is definitely possible to do that and learners then end up gaining a lot from the feedback of their peers, but also the process of doing that review, which then allows them to be better reviewers of their own work too. I think one of the big places in terms of where we can go with MOOCs is how do we bring them together. Um, so we have a lot of great standalone pieces of, of content. Um, we have a lot of learners that are pulling together a, a path for themselves um, through all of those different learning experiences. Um, and a question is how can we connect better with, um, with industry, with uh, where it is that learners are and where they're trying to go to create paths out of them um, and be able to um, understand as a learner comes in what are all the different areas that they need to achieve their goal and put together for them um, an overall plan of, of how they can take that forward. Um, I think another piece about the future is that as more learners take MOOCs and then are able to apply that in their jobs um, or in their daily lives, then the impact of them is being, going to become even more real. So 
So um, employers are going to be able to recognize the value of those more fully and um, use them as a vetting mechanism also. It'll mean something um, to know that a learner took and completed a MOOC. Um, it would not only mean the, the content that the MOOC is about, um, because we believe in the rigor of them and have seen it proven out, but also what it means for a learner to be self-driven um, enough to be able to get through a learning experience um, that takes a lot of internal motivation and dedication.